Hello and welcome to the second session of the study of Max Licato's You're Never Alone. Uh, in the first session we talked about God is with us in the ordinary and in this section we're going to talk about God is with you when you're stuck. I think you'll start seeing a theme with these as we go. Um, first of all I want to appreciate everybody that that did the first study with me. I'm, I appreciate that and hopefully this one will help. I think this one we can all relate to. Um, and sometimes it's not a good thing, but knowing that there's others that are going through that tends to help sometimes. So, so we'll just start off writer's block. When I first saw this, that's the first thing that I thought of. You know, when, when I'm stuck, it's writer's block. It's the most aggravating thing on the face of this planet to me. And to anyone who writes poetry, songwriters, anything like that, it's just... You know, and, and it relates to so many other things. You know, you're just stuck. Sometimes we feel stuck at home. Sometimes we feel stuck at work. Maybe you're stuck in a hospital bed. Maybe you're, you know, you can't get up and move around like you used to. Um, it's just a helpless, hopeless feeling. And I think, you know, it's, I think we can all pretty much relate to that feeling. Um, our patience runs thin. You know, we feel... Like we're just out of options. And no matter what you try to do, you just cannot get unstuck. But here's the tough part. Um, and I think this is one that we can relate to as well. Is I believe sometimes we don't take action to get unstuck because we become comfortable with, with where we're at. Um, we don't want to use the energy to get out of our rut. And... Today we're going to look at two different miracles uh, that John relates to. One deals with someone who has done everything for his dying son, and the other um, with a man who's been unable to walk for 38 years. Both circumstances seemed highly unlikely to change until Jesus steps in. Um, so where do you find yourself today? You know, are you stuck because you have just had it? You know, we get that way. We, we've just had it. And, well, I'm here and it's just what I'm going to have to deal with and I'm, I'm just going to have to deal with it. You know, or, you know, are we stuck because of that or are we stuck because we're afraid what the healing looks like? You know, I, I know that might sound crazy, but I believe it's true. Some, some folks stay in a, a job that makes them absolutely nuts, drives them crazy. You know, even if it's wrecking their marriage or, or just taking them away from life in general. Fear of something different, even when feeling led by a higher power, you know, they just won't do it. And some accept the life they have, no, no matter how stuck they feel, because they don't think they deserve better. And there's a lot of truth to that, I think. But God wants to help you get unstuck, you know, no, no matter where you go, how you got there. Um, but he doesn't just stop there. God, God's in the business of softening hearts to be more like he is. I mean, that's, that's what God does. And it's not always easy to get unstuck, but when you're in the hands of, of the healer, you know, no wound is, is left untended and no heart is left unbroken. And they that's just the truth. Um, and, and you find that out if you go to God and go and, and seek his guidance for that. So here's a couple of questions before I get into the reading that I want you to ask yourself. And these are straight out of the book. What area of your life do you feel stuck in today? If you're not currently stuck, can you remember a time when you were stuck and when you did feel that way. Also, when you find that you are stuck in an area of your life, what are some of your strategies for getting unstuck? So that's something, you know, write those two questions down and and see, you know, how, how have you come out of those situations before? And because sometimes we have to kind of remember, and, and did you go to God with it? That's That's pretty key, you know. Um, to be able to do so. So the first miracle we're going to look at um, is going to be in John 
chapter 4, and we'll start at verse 45. When he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him. They had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, for they also had been there. Once more he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son who was close to death. Unless you people see miraculous signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal official said, sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus replied, you may go, your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on his way, his servants met him with the news that his boy was living. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, The fever left him yesterday at the seventh hour. Then the father realized that this was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. So he and all his household believed. This was the second miraculous sign that Jesus performed, having coming from Judea to Galilee. This royal official was stuck. You know, he, he had nowhere to turn. He had that hopeless feeling. And as a parent, I, I can't even imagine. You know, there's been times when, you know, my son was really, really young and he kind of wandered off and we couldn't find him what seemed like an eternity. It was maybe a minute or two, but we couldn't find him. That feeling, you know, it's, it's really tough to find your faith when those types of pressure, that type of pressure sets in. You know, it's, it's really hard to automatically go to your faith. And that's understandable. God knows that. But this guy was stuck, you know, and, and Jesus seemed a little perturbed. You know, it, it's, if you notice through the Bible, Jesus is like, gosh, if you don't see it, you don't believe it. You know, what's the deal? And I can't imagine the, how Jesus felt. No, he knows he's the Son of God. There's no doubt in his mind. He, he knows that he is the one that has been chosen to, you know, eventually give his life for our sins. He knows all of this. So, from Jesus' standpoint, it's like, man, you know, does anybody have faith anymore? Does anybody have faith in God? And But even with that, he chose to heal this man's son. And one thing I wanted to, you want you to keep in mind before I read the next one. Um, Jesus wasn't physically around this official when he found out that Jesus actually had kept his word. And I want you to remember that. Okay. So the second one we're going to go to is in uh, John chapter 5. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades, which is just columns holding a roof. Here is a great number of disabled people used to lie the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was the Sabbath. And so the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, Who is this fellow who told you to pick it up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who it was, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. The man was stuck. 
he, you know, as he could be. For 38 years, he could not get up. While, you know, some of us aren't in that physical shape, your life might just be as stuck. You know, Jesus made, Jesus made this man believe that he could walk. So he did. And here's a personal belief disclaimer. This is my personal belief. I believe all of us have the power to do things that that we just don't know we have. Um, now, when we tell our kids, you can be anything you want to be when you grow up, you know, I mean that. I, I, I firmly believe you can do anything that you put your mind to. I believe we have that power within us to do things that, you know, outside of our uh, realm of thinking. I, I believe with all my heart that, that Jesus did give this man the faith and power to get up and walk. But I also believe that that man had it in himself the whole time. It just took Jesus to kind of give him that tug, to give him that push. You have the power to make a change in your life. You have that power. And through Jesus Christ, you can see that through. Hope that made sense. You know, I mean, this Jesus made this man believe he could walk, and and he did just that. And do you believe God can help you? Um, do you even give God the opportunity to help you? And I think that's something we have to look inside ourselves and and ask ourselves: Are we are we giving our whole self to God so that He can enable us and and give us that power? And I want to go back to Jesus often fled the scene. Okay, He often, before people got the chance to point him out and say, that's the guy. Um, that's the miracle worker. Only to be announced later, you know, I think this caught, that caused those that needed the faith to realize it, to be able to see it. Um, before actually finding out that it was Jesus. And I think I think that's a lot of, you know, throughout his ministry that, that took place a whole lot of time. So, you know, Jesus, when the man, when the official was going from, I mean, he, you gotta realize he had to walk back, you know, travel back to his home and between the starting point A and point B, he didn't know if Jesus kept his word or if he was just trying to pass him off and say, get out of here, you know, yeah, he's healed, go ahead. This man had to have faith that Jesus Christ meant what he said, and he did, and he did it, because the official was met on his way back home without knowing if his son had died or not. So that, that to me, really stands out. That, that's where our faith comes in. You can pray to God. You can pray and, and ask for things, you know, healing. And if we don't see it right away, do we have the faith that it's coming? Do we have the faith that Jesus is listening to us? Or do we just want it so instantly, an instant gratification, that we kind of give up on that faith? So that's something to keep in mind. Um, now I'm going to read directly from the book again with my glasses because I can't see um, so I want you to take a few minutes and list practical steps you could take to get unstuck from whatever situation you feel trapped in keep in mind here that, that shame and guilt should not be they're not good motivators so don't shame yourself don't guilt yourself into, into things be kind with yourself as you think of actions that you can handle today and in the days to come. So if you're stuck, which folks, a lot of us are, you know, we're either stuck in our faith, stuck in our jobs, you know, stuck at some point in time with personal relationships. Now's the time. Now's the time to go to God with it and, and to to realize that you know we must have that faith so to close out there's a prayer in this book that it I couldn't do it better myself so I ask that you pray with me 
as we end this session. And I appreciate everybody um, taking the time to do this study, and hopefully it's helped out in some way. Why don't you bow your head? God, help me in the areas where I feel stuck in life. I don't always know how to get unstuck, what to change, or what the first step toward change even is. Show me all the small things I can do now that will make a big difference in my life, in my heart, and in my relationships. Give me ears to hear and eyes to see so that I can follow on the way of Jesus and not stay stuck forever. Thank you for loving me where I am and thank you for loving me too much to leave me there. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I'll be back next Wednesday, Wednesday uh, with our third session, which will be God is with you in the storm. So I hope everybody's enjoyed this and have a great day and we'll see you next time.